Hi there, you're listening to the Practical Stoic Podcast with your host, me, Simon Drew. If you'd like to listen to over 200 episodes that were recorded before 2020, then you can head to my Patreon site. It's patreon.com forward slash Simon J. E. Drew. We'd love to have you there and any support is greatly appreciated. We'd love to also have you on our Facebook community, The Practical Stoic Mastermind. But for now, enjoy the show. So we are here with Kai Whiting. Kai, I'm really glad to have you on. We've already recorded an episode that we were going to put, uh, I'm, I'm releasing a few weeks from now, but uh, you know, you kind of reached out to me and said, hey, you know, do you want to do an episode about what's happening at the moment around the world uh, from the stoic perspective, maybe? Um, and, you know, I thought that was a brilliant idea as or as something that I was thinking about doing. Um, and a, a, a bit of context for why I think that it's important that we discuss this, uh, because I don't want people to think that we're just jumping in this, taking advantage of a crappy situation around the world to bring another you know, heated voice to the canon of everybody yelling about this, right? Um, But, you know, back when I restarted this podcast at the start of the year, I kind of said that one of the reasons why I wanted to do it, because I I strongly felt that the 20s was going to bring us some of the most unique uh, and incredible challenges and opportunities that humanity has ever faced. And during those challenges, those challenging times, what we need is more rational people We need stronger people. We don't need weak people. Um, And we need people who are going to stand up as leaders within our communities, within our families, our societies, who can show the voice of reason and show the, 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 you know, the correct path to how, what, what it means to be a human being and how we can all come together and be stronger together. And it's just a fact that during times like these, Kai, you know, this, this is the forge that creates a stronger humanity, right? And and I don't want to paint a positive picture of what's happening because it's a very um, serious situation. But at the end of the day, it's situations like these where we have a choice. Do we descend into chaos or do we see this as an opportunity for humanity to strengthen and for us to come together and understand what's actually fundamental about being here, right? And so... Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about this. You probably know so much more than I do. So Kai, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. You know, you've been on the show before, but tell everyone a little bit about yourself and why we're having this conversation. So my, my research is stoicism and sustainability typically. So I apply stoicism to global issues. That I was one of the first people to do that was not necessarily the first, but one of the people who says, okay, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know how to use stoicism to deal with anger. That's not really something that I can do for everybody else. I can look at my own anger, but it's not something I can look at from an academic or from a research perspective or in terms of providing advice. But I do look at, say, uh, things like climate breakdown, which is not exactly what, what we're facing right now in terms of the, the, the sheer scale of the of imminent, imminent problems and danger is really, you know, in front of our faces right now with the coronavirus. But I think climate breakdown is a nice or terrible analogy in the sense of that that is also a global problem that has to be tackled nation by nation. So although I do not, do, I'm not a you know, medical researcher, I'm not a medical doctor, I could see sort of some parallels between the climate breakdown problems, which is again, a global problem that will need a cosmopolitan spirit and a spirit of rationality and this um, terrible um, coronavirus pandemic, which has now been declared. Mm, yeah, no, exactly. And and so that's why I'm so glad to have this conversation with you because, you know, you come from kind of not exactly the discipline of looking at these viruses, but um, from a global perspective. Uh, and also having that stoic perspective is extremely helpful in this kind of situation. Um, you know, I, I, even, I even want to read something to you that Seneca said, which uh, seriously, like times like this, it's the best advice. He says, I mean, it's the best advice on two parts, but we'll get to that. He said, you ask me to say what it is particularly important to avoid. My answer is this, a mass crowd. It is something to which you cannot entrust yourself yet without risk. So you've got two elements there. Firstly, you can look at what the crowd of humanity is doing right now, the chaos that a lot of people are descending into. 
and you can say, I don't need to be in that level of chaos, right? That doesn't mean that I just go out there and I, I live my life as normal. But what it means is that you don't allow the situation to affect your rationality, right? And also right. maybe just take it very literally. Maybe you need to avoid crowds at the moment, right? Like maybe you need to just absolutely, absolutely. not be amongst that. But tell us, uh, tell us, you know, what can the, the aspiring stoic out there do to show more leadership, to show greater mm -hmm. rationality and a sense of cosmopolitanism in this time when everyone seems to be in the same boat of suffering? I think, I think the Stoics, I mean, Stoicism was born out of crisis. Mm. Zeno was shipwrecked. Yep. And if he had not been shipwrecked, he would have stayed as a merchant selling the most expensive dye, which was then known to humankind. So Stoicism is not only a philosophy that is suitable for dealing with a crisis, whether that be a shipwreck or a crazy, you know, crazy situation for Seneca and Nero, but it's also born out of crisis. It is exactly why it came to be. You can imagine Zeno being really happy the day before, thinking about all the money he would have made from the die he was about to sell. He's crossing the path from perhaps, he's from Cyprus, perhaps from Cyprus to Athens. Suddenly there's a shipwreck. His wealth literally drains into the sea. All of life pleasures that he had envisioned the day before have gone. He turned, you know, he, he rolls up on the shore. He probably brushes himself down. His clothes are torn. He's destitute. He's penniless. He has no way home. He's literally stranded. And he's sitting there going, I don't even know. Possibly, this is my view of it. I don't even know how I'm going to pay back those people. I owe the money to. What am I ever going to say to my family? I'm a failure. I had, I had all these ideas. I had these dreams. And my world is never going to be the same again. So I was reflecting on Zeno had seen a very similar situation in his own life in the sense that one event changed everything. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, a lot of people have seen their pleasures evaporate. They haven't got their football match. They haven't got the disco. So if you're not careful, you can start to complain about such things instead of taking time going, I've always wondered you know, what it would be like to read, let's say, meditations and I've never had the time to do it. Or I've always wanted to listen to that one podcast. I've always wanted to teach my you know, kids how to play chess, for example. So the Stoic says, okay, you're in this situation. Which, you know, is your, is your glass half empty or, or half full? I'm not saying that we should be overtly positive and start having like a Disney film sort of sing along. No, but is my glass half empty or half full? Who am I in a crisis? I don't know who I am in a crisis until I live a crisis. So virtue, when we talk about virtue, we talk about the fact that it is made manifest in our actions. It does not exist in a vacuum. Stoicism is not a philosophy for merely for academics, like certain philosophies are. The virtue is in what I decide to do, how I think about my situation and the attitude I take. So the good news is, and it is a good news from a stoic perspective, is that now we really get to know ourselves. We mm. really get to know who we are in a crisis. So when uh, Zeno, after that crisis, he needs advice. Who does he go to? He goes to the Oracle, the Oracle of Delphi. And on the door, it says, know yourself. Because with whatever advice that she gave, you would interpret, interpret it wrong if you didn't know who you were. So when there's like medical advice, I have to ask myself, who am I? Where am I based? What is the health service like where I am? So I took the decision to voluntarily isolate myself in my house because I know that where I am at the moment in Lisbon in Portugal, we have an average age of 44 years old, which means we have a high, highly aging population. I also, having used the health service, I like it, I think it's good, but it's not the UK. So I took the decision that, okay, I'm young, I'm probably not you know, at risk myself, but I could spread it. And that would be incredibly unwise of me to do. Also, like, I, I'm aware, like, for example, my sister, my, both my sisters in the UK had three, but two of them are pregnant. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, they're gonna give birth, one very imminently actually, and if I was it, someone like me in the UK was irresponsible and that baby was born premature, that baby may not get the resources that they need. And therefore that baby could end up disabled because somebody like me took a decision to say, well, I don't really mind. So mm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get sick. And so as a stoic, I, I asked myself, do I need to go out based on my role? 
what, so what did I do? I asked a friend of mine to stay at our house. I said, look, you have to stay because you're in a, you're in a student accommodation with hundreds of people going in and out. So I think you're safer if you stay with me because there's not as many people going in and out. So that was the decision that I took. I literally picked up the phone and said, right, I've got to do, I've got to do a cosmopolitan thing. I, I, have, a, I have a spare room. I, I can't leave it spare, not in this crisis. So that's the kind of thing, Simon, that I think this opportunity provides. It says, who are we, like you said? What can I do? So I can't change the world. I'm not a doctor. I can't save lives. Maybe I can help one person because I have a spare room. And so that's what I did, for example. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And, and I really think that this idea of cosmopolitanism is, is what's, what's important to look at here. Because if you truly understand cosmopolitanism, what you start to understand is the interconnectedness of human beings, right? We all rely on each other. What one person does literally affects millions of people. And, and, and it might not be in a massive way, but especially with something like this, like, if you're just if you're just being that you know that kind of person who's like, well, I'm not going to let the government tell me how to live my life, and you go out there and you know you go out and you just live your life and you keep on doing things and um, you know maybe you catch it, maybe you give that to one person. All it takes is you giving it to one person, then that turns into two, that turns into four, that turns into eight, and that's just how this virus goes, right? Like it's just it's right. it spreads quickly, and we need to understand that that as we always understand. Uh, there is a massive interconnectedness between human beings as we're seeing right now. And it's so true what you're saying as well, that it's times like these that reveal us to ourselves, right? And, and it's been really interesting for me to look at this because what you see is if you will step back and look at the world from an outside perspective and look at what humanity is, at the end of the day, all we are, is a bunch of wildebeest with a lion hiding in the grass, right? Like there's, yeah. there's something yeah. happening right now that we're a bit afraid of, which is very rational to be afraid of. Cause if that Absolutely. lion comes out, it can take you down. Right. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, we see one person run and buy a load of toilet paper and we think, Oh gosh, <laughs> all of a sudden you start getting into that herd mentality. Oh, I need to go out there and I need to take all the toilet paper. And then everybody takes all the toilet paper. There's no toilet paper for anyone else. It's like, <laughs> it's just, it's one of those situations where you see what humanity really is. And I truly believe that in times like these, like in any hard time in hu human history, the best thing that you can do is to, take a stand as a leader in your family first, then in your community, then in your country. But, and, but you do that by being the most rational, ethical version of yourself that you can be. And if you absolutely. can do that, you're absolutely affecting thousands, millions of people just by the fact that we are so interconnected. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I want to, want to highlight when we say one should be courageous, right? That doesn't mean being... Uh, foolishly brave, foolishly brave. Mm. Like, oh, look at my bravado. It's not being, not saying, oh, I'm going to brave it out. I'm going to be, you know, the, the, you know, the stoic of a small S and I'm going to go to the supermarket anyway. That's not, that's not courageous. Courageous is saying like what I had to say to my family when they were not taking it particularly seriously, uh, but none of us are you know, particularly old. So yes, but we don't have enough hospital beds. We are, you know, the issue is not that we are going to catch it as a, as a, as a, as a nation or globally, the issue is the peak. And they didn't understand that. So I explained to them, like, I'm not worried that, that people catch it. I'm worried that when they catch it, there will be many more people also catching it. And then we won't have the medical equipment, the treatment or staff to deal with the problem. And then that's, you know, that percentage of people that, that die have become severely disabled as a result. They may have very much long-term problems like a lung transplant that increases because there isn't the ability to provide medical care. So people are, well, everyone's going to catch it any, anyway. Well, that may be true. And that is not the issue here. So this is why we, we you know, we say in stories and like, you know, live according to nature. Understand the nature of the virus, which we're not going to talk about here because there are better people to do that. There, there are better places to read that. Understand the nature. So understand that it may take up to six weeks in some cases, not many, but typically 11 days for the symptoms to show. and Unfortunately for us as human beings, unlike flu, that's the window of opportunity for the virus. So understanding very basic facts and explaining to your family members, okay, 
it's the pink that we need to we need to to shift we need to lower it down or we need to make say two or three peaks rather than a tremendous one and then we've got no staff operating which i thought you know even my own family who i said i have two sisters that are pregnant and the third sister i have three is a nurse and even so they couldn't understand what what we were trying to manage so you've got okay one one level i need to know what the facts are two i need to know what my role is so if i'm a parent sorry your priority are you know is your children and their well-being and that may be saying well even if say in the uk the schools are open uh tomorrow um maybe if your kid has asthma perhaps being courageous is saying i'm sorry you're not going to school mm. maybe that's being courageous Maybe being courageous is, is writing your, a little note and posting it through the letterbox of a person who's, say, 85 years old and who's frightened to go out because they, they know that they're likely to catch it and if they catch it, they're going to get sick. Then maybe it's just posting a little note saying, you know, my name's Kai, I live at number three, and if you need anything, let me know. Hmm. That's also courageous because we've, we've lost that spirit of cosmopolitanism where we look out for the neighbor we've kind of gone you know washed our hands a little bit like in the metaphorical sense of everybody and not just you know just the gem okay no it's it's beyond my control i, I can't help anybody that, that's not the straight uh, way of looking at things i don't know if you want to say anything about you know, in australia if you've seen people uh, step up to the plate in terms of neighborly relationships well i don't know you know i i, th I think Honestly, if there was anything that would be positive that would come out of something like this, not to belittle a very seri serious situation, it is that humanity needs these situations in order to realise uh, what makes us more in common than what divides us, right? And at the end of the day, you know, you even look at the fact that the whole, you know, economy is essentially shutting down in most parts of the world. And now what you realise is like, all of this time, maybe when you you hated your employer because, oh, they're not giving me a raise and they're not giving me this and that. Well, hang on. Now it's even in question whether they can even pay me or not. Now I fully understand how much value there is in having an employer. <laughs> and now the employer also understands how much value there is in having an employee because if your employees can't come to work, then you don't make money. Like It's, it's almost like situations like these level everybody to the same kind of playing field and everybody understands that hey at the end of the day we're all human beings we all uh, we're all powerful but at the end of the day we're not that powerful there is something that can absolutely wipe us out and uh, and that thing is nature that thing is <laughs> everything that's outside of us right and so it's it's just an interesting time to think okay humanity needs something like this in order to forge us and to bring us back to what is essential so start thinking right. about what is essential you know family relationships caring uh empathy uh you know being rational uh you know thinking correctly and so i think if anything uh, what we could do in this episode what i hope people get out of this episode is the encouragement to to be rational, to look at the facts, right? Don't just make up your mind that this is some conspiracy. Don't make up your mind that this is one way or another. Go to the experts. We're going to put some links in this episode in the show notes for everybody to where you can go, which would probably be a good place to go, right? To get the right information. And I would encourage everybody, get the right information about, about the global situation. Get the right information about the local situation as it pertains to you and then get the right information about how you could be acting with yourself, with your family and in your community that would, uh, it would be most ethical in a situation like this. And that would just be the correct thing to do. Correct. I just, uh, just need to correct one word is that in Stosen, we don't like empathy. It says that we don't like putting ourselves in other people's but we do sympathize because mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. My aunt uh, rang me literally two days ago in panic mode because her boss had, had telling, told her, about all the problems that she had. And I said, well, I literally, well, that is not your problem. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean you don't help her, but identify which is your problem and deal with it. And identify which is her problem and deal with it, but don't put her problem in, in your basket, like, and carry that burden. You see, Stoicism doesn't ask us to carry other people's burden. And then unfortunately, then people interpret, oh, then we just wash our hands again and we don't care. No, we, we really care, but we carry our problem in our own basket 
and we look to the other person and say, your basket's a little bit heavy, can I help you? But we don't take the problem from that basket and put it in our own. We literally just hold our hand out and help the person carry the basket as, as, you know, as, you know, as able as we are able to and as long as they're willing to receive their help. But we don't grab people's problems and put it in our own basket. Mm. This is where Simon's um, advice about knowing exactly who we are in our, you know, the global situation, the local situation is fundamental. So mm. if our neighbor is having an issue, yes, we need to recognize that and we need to offer help if we believe we you know, think about, it. can we really help, but not take all their problems and then get weighed down by it and say, this, the world's coming to an end and I will not, I will not manage, I will not cope. No. Okay. How can I cope? How can I manage? And if possible, how can I help somebody else carry the load without putting the load, in, in, you know, in my own family's truck? So I, yeah. I just wanted to correct that because I, I've seen a lot of panic news because people go, oh, I'm running out of toilet paper because my neighbor's running out of toilet paper, so I must buy more, even if they had 12 rolls, for example, and they live alone. So it, it's really saying, what exactly do I need? What exactly is my skill set? How can I help people? Or yeah. how can I get out of the way? In my case, it was like, how can I get out of the way? I need yeah. to get out of the way because I, I'm not helping by, by being you know, in the supermarket all the time. So I decided like the other people in the house would go out to the supermarket and when they came in, I would give them you know, their towel and they would go straight to the shower. I said, okay, maybe we don't kill the virus, but let's keep good hygiene practice. Let's yeah. kill anything else or something. So they went straight to the shower and I organized their stuff. So I didn't go out for a week because I thought, what's the point of having, adding myself increasing the probability but well, i'm i can deal with that being having written a book i've been used to staying at home whereas the other people in the household hadn't been used to staying at home so i said look to me it's almost like a normal week because i'm so used to staying at home writing a book so it's also like asking yourself you know am i physically fit and able am i the best person to do this maybe i'm not perhaps i'd better off jumping on a podcast and giving my advice there in you know seclusion of my own home so i'm um, again i'm not advocating an old assignment to say you know create all these problems for yourself no really separate what is Australia's problem for example what is you know Melbourne's problem then what is you know my problem in my street and then in my family and taking leadership and basically calming people down a lot of people have decided to completely you know exclude themselves but I've noticed for example the number of phone calls I've received has dropped mm -hmm. now that doesn't make any sense to me because Phone calls don't kill me. So yeah. I've decided that this week I need to phone people because in that whole sort of how do I sort myself out, I haven't actually made as many phone calls to just check on people. Mm. And I haven't received as many phone calls to check on people. So I could have friends of mine who are quite ill and I don't even know. So I would encourage people to say, okay, maybe if you do nothing else, maybe make a phone call. Make a phone call to somebody who you think either lives on their own or tends to go into panic mode, as long as you, as I've just said, you don't take their problems and put it into your own basket. It goes into panic mode and you say, look, and you can give them, you know, the link to this podcast or the links, you know, below and just talk them through the problem because the more people that panic, the less likely we are to be virtuous in our dealings with each other and the more vicious we become. And it, unfortunately, it's not just toilet paper, it becomes things like, uh, our, you know, alcohol wipes which the problem mm. is, is if we take all of them, then other people don't have them and then the spread happens. Because it's not just that we, we don't have the virus on our hands, it's that nobody else has it either. Yeah. Do you want to add anything to that, Simon? Well, yeah, no, I, I guess I also want people to see that uh, what you can see if you actually look in this kind of situation is you see what is so incredible about humanity, right? because this is now a full blown situation. And what do you see? You know, all of these, uh, you know, infectious disease experts coming out with their expertise, their duty, right? They're like, this is my time to come in and be helpful here. You see private companies starting to look for a vaccine. Like we need to get onto this, right? Like we need to fix this situation. So what you see in a situation like this is you have two choices. You can either go with the camp that says, okay, what's my duty in my society right now? How can I be of most help to the situation and not make it worse? Or you can say, there's a line in the grass. I'm going to run with everybody else, right? Like there's a lot of people who are just unconscious right now, just absolutely panicking. And that is not effective at all. It's not the effective approach. And so really like, I, I think that the, 
And it's also be- like, take this time, as you say, to reach out to people, take this time to look at what you can actually do to help the situation and not make it worse and actually reach out and, and be a voice of calm to a lot of people. Right. Cause as you said, there are a lot of people out there who might be worried, who might be really stressing out somebody who's old, uh, somebody who is, you know, dealing with a health health issue. They might be really stressing out right now. Uh, be the person of comfort for as many people as you can. Um, and, you know, I even think it, there's, there's this great, video that's going around on social media of uh, this this apartment complex in Italy you may have seen it where everybody's sitting on their balconies and they're playing instruments and they're all singing together and having a good time it's like that video when I saw that I saw that and I, I said humanity is absolutely incredible we are just absolutely beautiful if you see if you look at what's happening around the world uh that's bringing people closer together, you see exactly what this sort of thing is for, right? It brings us together. It makes us realize our humanity. It makes us realize that, you know, as, as you say, like memento mori, like we, we all could die. So why don't we, why don't we try to be the best and do the best that we can here with what we have? And, and I think that it's important for people to say, Now's not the time to panic. Now's not the time to go out there and make irrational decisions. And now, not, now isn't the time to not worry as well, right? Now's not the time to be careless. It's the time to get the facts, to then find out what your duty is, what you can do, and to maybe do a dichotomy of control analysis and say, what's outside of my control? What's inside of my control? Now, I'll just do the best things that I can do that are inside of my power right now. I think we should end it there. Yeah. I think that's the perfect end. Yeah, we just just got to encourage people. Just do the best that you can do. Don't panic and and be the leader that you can be in whatever capacity that you can. But yeah, Kai, I want to thank you for reaching out to me and 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 getting on the show as well. I think this is just a good opportunity to for us to uh, I guess do our duties as people who people are listening to, right? Um, to maybe not be the chaotic news anchor who's saying, oh, you've, oh my gosh, we've got things running out here. We've got things running out there. There's people going every, like, let's just calm it down for a second and do what you can do to make the world a little bit easier for everyone right now. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Guy. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. If you'd like to stay up to date with the Practical Stoic community and everything to do with this podcast, then just go to my website, simonjedrew.com and subscribe to the Practical Stoic Weekly, a newsletter that I send out every week with updates and all sorts of great Stoic insights. You can also find me everywhere online by searching Simon J.E. Drew. See you next time.